Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading some more of Radnor House's Gold Proposal, also known as SCP-001 or Amani Ram. Now let's get right into this. I think this is where we left off yesterday. Attached document from July 1984 from the desk of Dr. Robert Aram. Personal log. Progress in revealing the cold fusion in reactors is progressing much, much faster than projections. Normally I'd be worried, but I'm surprisingly calm. It's obvious our people are getting familiar with the technology. The Fulad foundries are operating at amazing efficiency. We've worked out how to mold and shape the metal just how we need it. And with and what last year looked like a bizarre, nonsensical circuit structure and design philosophy now strikes me as beautifully idiosyncratic. A snapshot from a bygone era. Oh, into a bygone era. Wow, I can't read apparently. <coughs> I've never really been one for history, more of a STEM type. I never looked down on that. On those that pursued history, I just didn't see the attraction. Machines are in front of you, something tangible you can see and hear and touch and interact with. You can't do that with history. Not really. The Fulad throne, of course, has changed that. I've spent lifetimes of ancient emperors in minutes. It's staggering. The depth of emotion and personality you can feel from only a few choice minutes in someone's body. Their grief, pain, joy... This story. Fascinating stuff. The technology of the throne and any possible side effects remain elusive. But we've been testing it for a few weeks now, maybe a dozen times, and while I'm always tired after, not a surprise at my age, <clears throat> I feel fine otherwise, and now I know Mechanite, Greek, and Egyptian. Go figure. I've gotten a front Unsee view to the Fortress War, and it is apocalyptic. There's really no other word for it. Gigantic mech suits crushing cities as the sky itself opens up. Spirit demons fighting alongside human compatriots. Metal soldiers charging walls. Insanity. A secret, bloody history the world doesn't even remember. But as with all war, it's not quite so black and white. Being inside the Bumaros, or the various Bumaros bodies, none of them were tyrants or dictators. <coughs> Maybe autocrats, but what emperor was it? They all wanted to protect their people, to raise them to something beyond human. I can't help but sympathize. Nothing impressive is onto you the fragility of your body, than nearly losing it. But they understood that and actually improved themselves using the bionics and implants. Reach heaven and through transhumanism. <coughs> Speaking of implants and bionics, the cat we discovered some weeks ago along with the Legion armor, 0511 and denied D-class testing. It's frustrating. We can't use the technology the glorious technology here to improve the world. We can't use it to improve ourselves. We can barely use it to improve the damn city. It's devastating, and most of the team agrees. <clears throat> Which means that we should use it. So we did. <coughs> damn, I've got a nasty cough today. I can't use D-Class to test implants, but using myself is a different matter. The new arm is... wonderful. It's smoother, more responsive, more sensitive and durable. It doesn't even hurt at the end of the day. I can sleep with it on. 99% of our personnel in Amani Ram are already augmented. So changing out their stainless steel arm for a flawed one or something is no big deal. <clears throat> Why should Five be the only one that uh, reaps the gifts the Mechanites left us? I 
On July 29th at 2.05 p.m., Dr. Nuss, Nussbaum and four members of the archaeology the archaeological team were excavating a number of mosaics in the Undercity. Over the course of the day, the team progressed further inward, into an unstable section. The ceiling overhead suddenly gave way, causing a minor collapse. Due to a number of strength-enhancing bionic and cybernetic augments, the archaeological team members were able to escape largely unharmed. However, Dr. Nussbaum sustained severe internal and external injuries from the collapse and was rushed into emergency surgery in the ARF-01 infirmary. <clears throat> Due to the severity of the injury sustained, including a shattered collarbone, fractured spine, cranial injuries, and hemorrhaging, medical personnel were able to stabilize her in critical condition. Her likelihood of survival was deemed extremely low. At this point, Dr. Aram arrived with several engineering team personnel, an SCP-001A incense, and a variety of mechanite implants and augments. He proposed to the medical team's agreement that utilizing the advancing mechanite augments to stabilize her and offer a chance of survival was the ethical option, and was legitimately impossible using SCP-001-A1's expertise voiced through the EA instance. A combination of medical and engineering personnel worked for 29 hours to implant 17 pieces of mechanite technology across Dr. Nussbaum's body. <clears throat> After 32 hours unconscious, she awoke on July 31st. Attached transcript, July 1984. Begin and log. What? Oh, you're awake. Here, don't move your arms. Aaron loves a cup of water to her lips. She he takes long sips. Can't see. That's probably for the best right now. Do you remember what happened? Ceiling. Collapsed. Assistance okay? Yeah, yeah. They made it fine. out fine. You weren't so lucky. They brought you to the infirmary, but you were fucked up. Really, really bad. <clears throat> Broke nearly every bone in your body. Uh, that's why I'm freezes. I cannot feel my legs or my arms. My back aches. The morphine. Robert, why can't I feel my limbs? You were going to die. I stepped in. We worked for nearly a day and a half, non on stop. Doing what? Replacing your shattered body with the mechanite aesthetics we recovered. Letting them do the work of saving your life. We put them in and they went to work. Your immune system integrated with them seamlessly and it was like they came to life working to repair the damage done. <coughs> I... <laughs> Hedvig, calm down. Listen to me. Oh god, I look like a monster, don't I? Listen to me. You would have died, and even if you didn't, you would have laid in this hospital bed for three agonizing years for your body to stitch itself back together. And then you would have to relearn how to walk, sit, breathe, and you would have suffered in pain for the rest of your natural life. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way after the accident. That I had been ruined. That I would never be the same. <clears throat> the flesh is weak, Hedvig. Your new body will be up in, on your feet in a week. Maybe less. 
You may never be the same. You'll be better. Get some rest. And for what it's worth, I don't think you look like a monster at all. These implants are works of art. The spine support is spread like a pair of wings. You look like an angel. <coughs> hmm. Dr. Nussbaum continued her recovery for two weeks in SCP-001, refusing Medivac to Area 66 and so not... And so not, I, upon seeing the extremely rapid recuperation offered by the implants. Evaluations and by medical personnel provide insight into enhancements offered by the mechanite augmentations. Internally, they integrated with her immune system and nervous system, offering fine instinctual control and an increase in healing speed. Due to the relative lightness of the fulad metal work compared to U steel, her body mass has to not shift considerably. However, her strength, lift capacity, running speed, pull weight, and the suite of other measurements vastly increase in the weeks following her recovery. She similarly reported significant increases in her sensory ability. Well beyond that, given by I have formal foundation in issue ocular and auditory implants. The spinal brace and its external portion, an artfully crafted pair of wings, able to be extended and retracted by the user, allow limited but noble ability to, guide, to glide on the strong updrafts. On August 28th, Dr. Nussbaum declined an offer of a test position in Area 66. Choosing to continue her correct her work as project co lead of the Amani Ram Initiative. <clears throat> Dr. Aram was reprimanded for his unauthorized use of potentially dangerous anomalous artifacts on a colleague and himself, but was not given disciplinary reaction considering the extenuating circumstances and Dr. Nussbaum's expressed gratitude toward him, saying that if she had been unconscious, Conscious, she would have consented to, or that if she had been conscious, she would have consented to the procedure. <clears throat> and here's an attached transcript from August 1984. Dr. Hedvig Nesbaum and Dr. Robert Aram. The subject is SCP-001-A1. Hello, Preserver. You return! My eyes informed me of the accident! You have my sympathies, Hedera. My name is Hedvig. Of course, my apologies! Yes, well, thank you. I am told you helped the team save my life. <clears throat> they did. How did you know? My automata scoured the Undercity. I saw a structural failure in, this, in that sector and dispatched several units to warn you. I was too late. If you were too late, I would not be here. Indeed, you are. An impressive sight. Excuse me? You are the first human I have seen with full augmentations. The way it used to be done. The way we all used to be. Oh, right. I suppose this was sound fair in your time. Yes, my memory's inch closer. I remember receiving my first left hand, made of a polished red. Right. We came to tell you that we have nearly exhausted the records and cylinders you led us to. They are fascinating, but they do not explain what happened to Amani Ram after it was marched on by the Naka, the Covenant, and something called the Abonnement. 
which makes sense if they were being invaded and sacked, they wouldn't be writing stuff down. But you're still here, so... We were hoping you'd have something? I do! I remember gargantuan spirit in East that dwarfed the Colossi, forced them back! I remember catapults and trebuchets and great siege engines pelting the buildings with strange glass projectiles. Our confusion until we investigated the damage and the plague swept through our ranks like a wildfire. I remember the abominate lowering the great door to the city with a single spell. I remember donning my war armor and leading my legion and his family to safety, being ready to lay down my life. I remember failing. There's that name again. The Abominate. I have no face or identity to offer. Just a name. Sounds like whoever you were, you were very important. <clears throat> yes, like so many tens of thousands, I was a witness to the fall of the Mechanite Empire. But now I am the only one who remains. This is tragic and you have my sympathies. But unfortunately, this doesn't tell us anything we don't already know. <clears throat> but this may SCP-001 an A1's left hand protruding from the machine slowly unclasps. When it, within its skeletal grip is another cylinder for the Ephelot throne. This one is made up of rougher metal compared to the delicate ceramic of the others. <clears throat> Where did this come from? I have looked up to myself. The hundreds of cubits have inscribed steel and tubes that hold my enduring soul. My mind is spread across the Undercity, banks of data in every corner of a money realm, and the eyes that connect them. And I have seen in the deepest regions of myself, a shrine. <clears throat> what kind of shrine? Pieces of war armor, meticulously wrapped and preserved, and within them, this. A chamber has been sealed for centuries, over the millennia. My mind has deteriorated. The circuitry was not built to hold me for so long. I have forgotten why it is there. You must tell me. That is uh, intriguing. Yes, we can experiment with it right away. Thus, Vong gingerly takes the cylinder from SCP-001-A1. Clasping it in her metal fingers. Do you mind taking that up to be cataloged? I'll catch up in just a minute. Just need to go over some schematics. Thus, bomb exits the chamber. At this point, official audio ceases. However, scientific equipment in the chamber left by the engineering team contains small microphones that record the following conversation. This audio was not recovered until several months later by chance during a routine database sweep. You ask about the throne. What makes you say that? You seek the ability to command change. You resent these limitations of your station. <clears throat> I have no idea what you're talking about. The full on throne was forged from the very first sheets of the metal shorn from McCain's body. A throne is more than a symbol of power. It is an instrument of power. What do you mean? You have already noticed it, haven't you? Your voice carries weight. You command attention. Just now, she didn't even protest. 
simply followed your orders. I'm the project head. Of course they listen to me. <clears throat> Listening is an act. Obedience is beyond that. You have seen the engravings of the throne was forged at the dawn of the era. Bumaro's people bowed to it and spread forth across Asia like a gleaming sword. Laying down their lives for their lord, the throne could take and the power to dominate lesser minds. The kings who sat on it are useless, and now with everything you take on it, you invoke the memories, the name, the power of the kings of old. <coughs> Why are you telling me this? Surely you see it by now, the parallel of oh, time is a flat circle, and it swallows its own tail like a sand serpent. You have seen by Mar in memories, you have seen it there as wings. Look around you. This is ridiculous. Aram turns to leave. You seek to change the world, make it more accepting to people like you and her. So did he. The voice of the Emperor is yours now. Do not squander it. <sighs> The following day, another experiment was scheduled with the throne using the cylinder provided by SCP-001-A1. Begin log. Another transcript from the same month and year. Alright, this cylinder is slightly different, but the process will presumably be the same. I'm ready. Actually, I was thinking perhaps I could handle this one? What? I've gotten familiar with the Nesfam flexes or prosthetic limbs. Yes, A1 told us that the SCs use them were augments in the fist. These implants are original mechanite technology dating back to the Empire. It is possible they may let us see more. I... I guess, but they're an unexpected variable. They could interact differently, too. We cannot know until we try, and... We have not exactly shied away from trying experimental procedures. The wing arrangement on her back briefly unfolds and extends to its full width before collapsing back in. Yeah, fair point. I don't know. I just... I don't know. Are you alright, Robert? You're acting strange. I'm fine. It's fine. You can do it. Just, you know, be safe. Thus, Vom takes her, her seat into the throne, pulling the, a fist in, onto her left arm and inserting it into the, the depression. Behind him, behind her, Aaron places the e cylinder into its socket and turns it. Thus, Vom's head jerks back, and her eyes glow golden. But her reaction is significantly more tempered than Aaron's first exposure. Oh! Oh! Oh, goodness! You're taking it better than me. I imagine the implants have to do with that. What do you see? I am... Oh, God, it is loud. I'm standing. There I am, standing on the walls of the city. The Yes, the eastern gate. It is morning. The sun is being down on the desert. There are hundreds of us. Soldiers lining the walls. And yes, gun turrets. It is tense. I can feel myself barking at orders, and these soldiers are obeying. Setting up siege engines. Loading ammunition, evening out the wall, preparing for war. We are all in armor. Mine is more elaborate than the others. Yeah, the Emperor's armor was... No, I'm not the Emperor, not Bumaro. Who then? 
I... I do not know. I can see myself in the middle of, of a gun turret next to me. I'm a woman, olive-skinned and small. The armor is elaborate. It shows dragons fighting each other. I've seen her before. She was one of the Legion's generals. <clears throat> Hold on. Oh my god. What is it? The Colossus, it is gargantuan. It just took a step and shook the whole s the entire city. It's heading away towards the horizon. Wait, I see something in the distance. Someone kicked up sand. An army? No, a horde. I cannot see individuals, just a mass of bodies and armor and banners. And mountain and dust storm. They go as far as the eye can see. There must be tens of thousands of them. They are too far to engage, but they are coming. And there's nothing we can do to stop their advance. That must be the Nalka and the Covenant, then. Do you see any eyes of what the Obama- It- it changed! It- the city is on fire! Amani Ram is burning! Oh god, it is loud. I cannot hear myself think. The sky is red, it's choked with smog. All I can hear is the clashing of steel and screaming. We are in the southern district, crouching behind a barricade. I am... I leaned up and over and started firing my weapon. I can't see. I hear screaming. The buildings are collapsing. We are under mortar fire. We need to fall back. Stay with me. What does the enemy look like? Beasts. Monstrosities. Great masses of flesh and limbs in this sickly pale purple, dragging themselves through the dirt streets, spirits in the air, purple fire covering the walls. There are too many. They're advancing. I can hear the beating of their drums and their war chants. I can hear cannon fire beyond the walls. I can just barely see the colossi in the horizon through the smoke. The streets are met with blood and slime. We are sailing over the ruins of a house now. A mortar hit it. There is something in the city enter. An object. What is it? Someone... One of the men touched it. It broke open. He just... His face burst into leaves, screaming and contorting. What? There are vines spreading outward from him, creeping from his biological... Creeping from his, of his writhing corpse. It is a petrified plant we discovered in the inner city. A biological weapon. Jesus Christ. We are falling into the inner city, retreating, the legion holding the entrances and choke points against the swarms. The citizens trying to evacuate or, or dying. Oh god, there's so much death. I saw a man an open and chin to groin, beheading in one of the flesh beasts, blood pooling in and in the golden channels my short sword, slashing across my armor. Focus, Hedvig, try to call up the image of the Emperor. I yes, I am in the palace. The city itself is shaking. The Legion is holding the palace against the Horde. Umaro is on, the thr on with his wife. My lord, we must leave. They have taken three of the gates. We will not have much... Have a chance for much longer. He's not going to leave. No, he stands up. He is in his war armor, all gleaming gold and silver or plate, big enough to block out the sky. He leans down. <clears throat> you must go, Shahashna. What did he say? Jehoshna. I do not recognize the word. It seems similar to the words for protect or guard. We can figure out later. Yes. You must go and activate the kiss. We are arguing. I said the case is, is dangerous. That I cannot be ready. There is no control mechanism whatsoever. That activating it manually could be disastrous. 
We have no other choice. Go. Your king demands it. I bow. He is... He is preparing to go out and lead the defense. I will go and seat myself in the courtyard. This keep will not be bre breached. Not while I draw red. Wait. He's sitting in the same spot as the statue we found. Waiting. Sword and spear in hand. Holy shit, it's not a statue. I have left the palace. I'm running across the city to the nearest understood entrance. The mass of the horde is still beyond the walls, but so many have reached the city. My blade sings, but I can never, but I never stop. Sling one throat as I run past him, gutting another beast, crushing the skull of a covenant and summoner. There are so many. I must keep moving. I okay. I have jumped into the undercity, sealing the entrance behind me. It's different, brightly lit, well assigned, blood plastering the walls, corpses lining the passageways. Oh God! Where are you going? To the center, deeper and deeper into the labyrinth. I encounter resistance. The Covenant and Nauka's gifts have made it down here. The plant virus and mutated flesh pod tentacles we have seen. But not petrified and dead. Alive. Throbbing. What? Many soldiers moving through the Undercity. They do not know the passages like we do. They are confused. They do not last long. There are many families hiding in rooms and warehouses and dormitories and barracks. I cannot help them now. All I can do is keep moving. Do you recognize any of the roots? It's... yes, I just ran under the familiar corner. Uh, yes. I know where we are going. Where? Reserver's chamber. SCP-001-A1. Under the palace itself. It takes some detours, but I arrive where it... What? What happened? It is not here. Reserver is not here. Just masses of machinery, but no arm or mind or voice. The soulless vacuum tubes and circuit inscriptions. It hums with an unfamiliar energy. There are automata everywhere. Maintaining the machine, making sure it works. I look at it. I seal the chamber door behind me. It's just me. Wait, what? I need to interface with... Oh god, I understand now. What? Shahashna! It's close to guard and protect, but in a non-form, it means one who guards. A preserver. Oh fuck, that's why preserver isn't there. Oh fuck! I have disrobed. The armor lies in a heap. I reach out and touch. <clears throat> Thus far, eyes glow golden and she rides in the throne, her back arching wildly. She lets out a long gasp before going limp, sinking back into the throne. Hedvig! Hedvig! Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh my... I got... That was horrible. What the fuck just happened? I touched the machine and just... Agony. So much pain. I felt like someone was cutting me limb from limb. Burning my tongue off and burning my eyes. God. Are you okay? What do you see now? I... Yes, I am fine. I see... I do not know what I am seeing. Rubble, debris, it is quiet. <clears throat> I, wait, I can move. No, yes, I can move, but I am small. How small? I am inhabiting in one of the uh, automata. Just like how Preserver can control them. That's how's that. Is that. 
I exit out into the city. I can see... Oh, God. Oh, no. What happened? What did the kiss do? Everyone is dead. The horde? Everyone. There are corpses choking the street. Not a free patch of dirt to be found. Dead bodies covering every possible surface. Both my legionnaires and the horde and the citizens. No source of finishes. The quiet death of an entire civilization. What have I done? It's not you, Hedvig. I know how convincing it gets. Remember, it's not your memory. They're all dead, Robert. I destroyed the Empire trying to save it. Everyone I ever knew or loved. Everyone. Every motion to the engineering team to cut the power to the throne. They comply, but nothing occurs. Every moves to the side of the throne after a few seconds and physically pulls Nussbaum's hand, grasping the fists from its depression in the armrest. Her body relaxes. Hedvig, you hear me? Robert, yes, thank you. Thought we lost you for a second there. It was overwhelming. Yes, we learned a hell of a lot. Yes, yes, of course. No wonder Preserver cannot remember. What do you mean? She obliterated her own civilization while trying to save it. I had a taste of it for just a few seconds and it was too much to take. She has lived with that guilt for nearly 3,000 years. Who wouldn't want to forget? You're saying she did it on purpose? I am no engineer, but if I were a betting woman... I would guess these the, the cylinders are a memory storage form arm of some sort. She placed her memories into this to get rid of them. But obviously, when she rid herself of her memories, she forgot what it even was. <sighs> Upon the discoveries made in the throne report, Further testing was temporarily halted until a decision could be made on whether to inform SCP-001-A1 of its past. Until then, routine research into repair of infrastructure or elements of the city continued as a regular schedule. Attached transcript from September 1984. From the desk of Dr. Robert Aram. This is ridiculous. Reserver has been integral to the success of the Aniram Elm Initiative. Far more so than any of the O5 ibs of arbitrating what and whether she deserves to know her own identity. We won't even have the throne if she hadn't and, and led at us to it and provide the fist. The cylinders. Everything. We owe her. And even if we didn't, it's the right thing to do. Mad science is pro possibly one of the dumbest stereotypes of all time. Scientists have ethics. Even in Prometheus, where progress was done for the sake of progress, we had ethics. Expectations of behavior and morality. Making sure everyone knew exactly what they were signing up for. Not withholding crucial discoveries fundamental to their, their sense of being. The foundation is not scientists, it is bureaucrats. And bureaucrats are the, the ones who will do away with ethics for efficiency. I shouldn't get this mad, but just beg so many questions. It's representative of how they think of this project, not a font of tools to improve the world, but of information that needs to be suppressed and released when the world is ready. Visionaries do not wait for the world to be ready to present their ideas, because the world is never ready. We force the world to change. In the 60s, augments were a rarity in the Foundation. Agents who got them were freaks. They were a last resort to maintain functionality. Then they realized we were better, Faster, smarter, stronger. And look at us now, a project on two site and two sites staffed entirely by augmented personnel. 
but they obviously don't trust Reserver because she's a machine, even though she's not really. She was human once, but they can only think of her as a machine to use, to exploit. Yeah, that's corporations in general. Look at America. The same way they think of me and Hedvig and Tent and Zed and all the others. They don't trust us either. Not really. We've done more for them and gotten fuck all in return, except the permission to rebuild what has been our home for nearly a year. It's frustrating. I've been thinking about what SCP-001-A1 said. About the throne. It's not true. There's no paratech technology that can force a psychic connection. That would require a staggering amount of power and all sorts of bullshit. That makes me wonder. I've been probing Nussbaum, seeing if she responds like Preserver said she would. I don't know whether I'm delusional or looking for what I want to see, but I feel like there's something there. She just agrees to whatever. If it is true, and I'm not saying it is, it would logically ascend to the others too. Did they all agree to swapping out their augments with the Mech Knight once because it was what they wanted? Or was it because as it was what I want them to do? <clears throat> On September 30th, the O5 Council approved a plan allowing the involvement of SCP 001 A1 in each of a, of a, of a money realm to be declassified to it. With, uh, with it holding the details of its activation of McCain's kiss and destruction of the city. Doctors Aaron, Aaron Nussbaum entered its chamber right the following day. Interviewers, Dr. Hedwig Nussbaum and Dr. Robert Aram. S subject, SCP-001-A1. Begin log. Reserver. Hello again. Welcome! It has been some time! Yes, our apologies. Regretfully, we had to ask our superiors for some things where we could have this conversation. Your superiors? Are you beholden to them? Yes, in a way. Well, in any case, we can talk now. We performed the throne test with the cylinder you provided. It was illuminating. Have you learned of my, my origin, my history? We have, yes. The cylinder allowed me to tap into your memories. At least, I think they're your memories. You utilize the throne? Uh, yes. Is that a problem? No! Continue! Yes, well, we encountered memories of an individual seen repeatedly by Robert and Vamaro's memories. A female soldier, one of the Legion's generals, likely favored by Vamaro due to their close personal relationship, advising the younger king in militarily during the First War, with campaigns in the East is in all directions. I see. We also discovered what happened to the city in the end. Tell me! It was besieged by a united force of the Naka and the Covenant of the Ideva, as well as an appearance by the, the Abominate. It is known! What more have you learned? How did they defeat us? The Legion was bar was marching on Black Aditum at the time, hoping to end the war decisively. The Colossi and the Home Army were the only ones left to defend Amani Ram. They used biological weapons, viruses, to attack the city and kill the Legionnaires and civilians. The city was lost as soon as the first Colossus fell. Did I serve my empire? Yes. You served your king and your people. You were instrumental in the, in the defense of the city, both before and after the walls fell. You also tried to, to evacuate Bumar and Hadera, but he sent you away. As the money were unburned, you had a different mission. Robert. You were told to hold the North Gate at all costs. Give the civilians a chance to escape the destruction. And you did. As the horde swept over the walls and saw everyone... 
on another path, you have the gate against a thousand and a thousand more sorcerers and spirit is in flesh beasts. The only reason people escaped the massacre. They fled! Mechanites walked to Earth today! It's possible, thanks to you. Thank you! I am in your debt! Just paying back our side with a bargain. The following unfinished email draft was recovered from SCEIP in that email service. It has not been sent and was last modified several weeks before the conclusion and of events in the modern realm. Hello, Jamil. This is to someone named Jamil from Nussbaum. Jamil Hashim, I'm guessing. I have some concerns about a staffing decision on Project SM I mean, CMP 189598, the Imani Ram Initiative. As Project Co lead, I retain executive control for almost all personnel decisions. But my concern today lies with my co-league, with my co-lead, Dr. Robert Silas Aram. Dr. Aram is a once-in-a-lifetime mind, but recent events regarding the project have left me questioning his suitability for a leadership position in stressful, isolated research environments. I worry he has let his emotions compromise the integrity of the project. In various cases, he made an uncentral medical decision, and on my, def on my behalf, Robert's not my uh, authorized medical proxy, augmented himself using experimental anomalous technology, utilized experimental dangerous anomalous technology to further our research, engaged in an argument with our overseer contact, referring to a sentient and semi-humanoid anomaly by name, Spending long periods of time alone with this anomaly, on one occasion lying to this anomaly and reacting angrily when confronted. Spending long periods of time alone with experimental anomaly technology attempting to deconstruct it. Focusing research in strange directions averse to the goals of the project. On several occasions he asked me to attempt to use an experiment or mechanical combat suit and what has recently been trying to ascertain the location of a pickerel math as of walking war platforms. Demanding an additional level of dedication and respect from employees who would who, who project research and himself respectively. Cumulatively, these actions have been to believe that Dr. Aram's worthiness for colleague should be erect. On the same day the game was drafted, the following audio file was recorded from this hidden recording device in Dr. Nussbaum's office. The file was similarly not recovered until a routine database a few months later. Due to the relatively small size of the device, foundation standard voice matching identification and technology is unavailable. Begin log. Door opens. Sound of an object slamming close. Hello, Hedvig. Oh, hello, Robert. Still awake? Yeah, I need to get some last minute reports done. Took the long route back from the Edig site. The city's beautiful at night, you know. Yes, it is. It's crazy to think that a year ago this place was all rubble and debris. Now it almost looks like a proper city. <clears throat> Are you alright, Robert? You look pale. I'm fine. Just spent a little bit of time tinkering with the throne. What? Relax, nothing serious, just some investigation based on things Bruce ever told you. What did you find? I'm not sure yet. There's some latent psychokinetic energy emanating from it, but we've been aware of that for a while. Just not sure what it means. What kind of energy? Not sure, but it's, getting, but it's gotten stronger recently. With every use of the, of the throne, it seems like. That is concerning. Aaron walks to the window, looking out over Amani Ram. 
It really is beautiful at night. We felt something grand out here, away from the rest of the world's eyes. I guess we'll come back to that later then. But yes, it's quite nice. It feels like a home. I don't know how I'm going to go back to bunking on site dormitories after this. <laughs> I'm unsure what to do. I want to, but nation and politics tire me and they are uh, only present in the larger sites. Amani Ram is nicer. Everyone here is here because they want to do the work. Agreed. Actually, I want to talk to you about that. Yes? I think we may need to shift gears a bit in terms of what we're focusing on, you know? I don't follow. At this point, we're pretty much confident in the timeline of what happened to Amani Ram. But the other nations in Yubamina, we know nothing about them except the battle. So I think it could be beneficial if we focus more on the weapons, the technology used during the siege, put the mundane archaeologies aside for a little while. The mundane archaeology has already led us to breakthroughs on the technology. We need to know how they lived and thought to see how they fought and died. I'm not disputing that, I just think it's not the biggest priority right now, so we could divert resources. My work is just as important as yours, Robert. Right. Yeah. What? I didn't say anything. I get straight on your face. You only see the history, the culture, as a means to an end. You cannot understand why someone would want to study it for its own sake. No, that's not... The same with Eleven. He does not give an ounce of respect to my team and their work. Neither of you do. I respect your work. I respect you. Oh, is that so, Robert? Is that why you feel you can come in and tell me what my team should focus on? Hedvig, please. Is that why you think you can make decisions about my body for me? What? You would have died. I saved your life. You said so. I was in shock. For damn it. I would have agreed to whatever was put in front of me. I was barely conscious. That doesn't change the fact that you would have died on the offering table if I hadn't stepped in. And who gave you the right to make my decisions of life and or that, hmm? Is that also because you respect me so much? <sighs> this is obviously about something bigger. I'm sorry I brought it up. No, we will have this discussion now. You changed my life forever. And seems to be under the delusion, under the, the delusion, you did me a favor. I will not dispute I am thankful you saved me from death, but I do not owe you anything. Everyone here owes me. I'm their leader. We are co-leads. Do not forget that. Bullshit. If it wasn't for me, this project would have been and shuttered months ago. I took the risks, and they paid off, and everyone else looks up to me for it. Why can't you? Is that it, Robert? We are friends. I do not look up to my friends. They are my equals. Kings don't have equals. I... I... You will listen to me. Your work has been secondary. You are secondary. The purpose of the initiative was to find the technology of the Mechanites. The history... It was ancillary. We have, have a living archive of their history with us now. The directive of the project has changed. Why are you... How... Do not resist me. You know the mission has changed, don't you? You felt its presence when you sat on the fr throne. What? The eyes. I felt it since the first day we entered this city. We have drawn the attention of something larger than us, and its eyes have sailed onto us for the past year. But now we have its name, the Abominant. It is not dead yet.
You're you're scaring me, Robert. I'd be more scared of other things right now. Like that unsent email on your laptop. Don't ask me how I know. It's not your place, but delete it. I said delete it. Set up laptop opening and clicking. I okay, done. Good girl. You played the role quite well, but you felt it watching us too, didn't you? I felt something. There are bigger things at stake now, and you will obey me. End log. Attached transcript, October 1984. Interview. It was Dr. Robert Aram. Subject, SCP-001-A1. Begin log. Evening, Preserver. Aram, it is late! Something has changed! Yes, the engineering team found the old cisterns under the eastern district and repaired the siege damage. We have plumbing, fresh water, power. The city is livable now. I saw! I refer to you! What do you mean? You have used the voice! Extending from a quiet whisper in your mind to, be, to the booming command! Demanding obedience! And if I had, I haven't made anyone do anything they wouldn't have done anyway. I haven't. <sighs> I make no judgment. You took the throne. One of my encouragement. This was not an unintended result. What have you used it for? Just explain the breadth of it, the limits, how it works. Yes, but that's not what you came here to discuss. What makes you say that? The moon hangs in the sky. All your men sleep. She is not with you. Hmm, are oh, you right? I didn't come here to ask you questions about the voice. Then speak. Hedera, did she love Amaro? Of course, deeply. She was his most favored wife, mother of his heir, light of his life, symbol of his dynasty, pure, shining, rising above the horizon with the sun. She attended to him until he was unable to speak or breathe or eat. And when he faded, she caught upon his wisdom while her son grew into the, into the throne. I see. You have made her your queen? I suppose so. I wouldn't use the word queen, though. <sighs> Why? Surely you saw the parallels. The prophecy. Time is a flat circle. Look at your right hand and tell me it is not so. I'm not a king. And neither was Bumero until he was given a city of people that need guidance. Three thousand years and one thing never changes. Humans crave leadership. You have Hedvig and your scholars. Bumero had... At Hidera and the Legion, a monogram itself. They were all simple farmers before, shepherds, peasants. And Mekkain's arrival, her fall from the heavens turned them into a king and a queen, their home into a bastion, their kin into the pinnacle of humanity. So, a monogram was a place those people could go? Different people? No, they were not different because of the augmentations. They chose to be different. Mundanity is not a virtue. They chose to elevate themselves because they were dissatisfied with the way things were. <clears throat> dissatisfied with being human. The satisfaction is the mother of ambition. It is the coal that fuels the fire. There is no shame in dissatisfaction with this form. We should be striving to improve ourselves. The flesh is weak. <clears throat> We've improved Mekin by collecting her component parts, scattered to the wind. We improve our bodies by replacing our frail limbs and senses in doing in both. We improve our souls in this way. We do not change the world around us. We improve. Uvet. I lied to you. I know. 
What? You lied in front of me, of my origin, of my history, of the fall of the city of, of Amani Iram. You knew. I serve my liege honorably for a lifetime and more. He may be nothing more than the bones in the ground now, but I see his face in yours. The lions of worry and the irises. I noticed signs that he was holding back, that you were holding back. I did not hold the gate. I did not save our city. You did not. He told you to go into the other city to activate the McCain's kiss, the teleportation device. Impossible! It was structurally unsound, unfinished! It would have destroyed the city, killed thousands! Look around you. The city was destroyed. Thousands did die. Yes, but I could not out have activated it anyway. There's no control interface, no way to di direct the energy. He gave you something. He called it a blessing. It was a vial of some sort. Told you to smash it and drink it. You took off your armor, you did, and touched the thing, and I guess you fused with the machine or something. You became the control mechanism and you fired. Teleported the city from the Sa to the Arabian Desert. The uncontrolled surge killed everyone. I sense no lie. I'm sorry. SCP-001-A1 paused into a process to say for several seconds for suddenly awakening. My circuitry is spread out at over countless sublevels and antechambers. My depths are stacked with data and free enhanced knowledge. My metal mind should process anything. Preserver. Not this. Never this. I was a general of the Golden Legion, and now I've damned my city, my race. Okay, you didn't damn anyone. Listen to me. I am at the center of my own hell. Hear me now. Yes, my liege. You failed. You could not save your city, and because of you, it collapsed into devastation and disrepair. You have disappointed your once and future masters. But it's not too late. We can still fix it. We can bring back Amani Ra. But I'll need you to do some things. How? What are you prepared to give up? Everything. On September 19, 1984, shortly after the one-year anniversary of the official or beginning of the Amani Ram um, initiative, another update in meeting was, uh, was scheduled with 0511. Following the general decrease in the quantity of technology and archaeological reports being transmitted from ARF-1 and ARF-2 to the projected site 07 on a bi-weekly basis. Begin log. 0511 is seated in Dr. Aram's office complex in ARF-01. The windows look out over the courtyard of the, with the statue of Emperor Bomaro. Hello, Overseer. Sorry for the delay. Just sorry I got some repairs in the Undercity. Robert, how are you doing? Not too bad. Yourself? Doing well. Thank you. I like what you've done with the place. Thank you. It hasn't been easy, but we finally turned into some place halfway livable. Right, yes, but I'm worried, Robert. Worried? About the pace of reporting. Your publishing is on new pair of technology in the city have declined by almost half in the past month or two. Dr. Nussbaum's reports on the archaeology and history have been met with the same fate. Speaking of, of which, where is Dr. Nussbaum? Let's walk. I've been in this office so much it's getting hard to think. Sure. Iron Man 0511 exits the office, accompanied by a detachment of MTF Alpha 1 bodyguards. They begin walking through the corridors of the palace and temple. Last mom's just working on some stuff in the Southern District. I'm sure she'll join us soon. But you were saying? I'm starting to think this project has run its natural course, Robert. 
What do you mean? There's still so much more to decipher. You barely know anything about the history, culture, peoples. Since what have you ever been interested in that sort of thing? It's a technology, Robert. It was always about unlocking the secrets of the city. And you did that job phenomenally. We've learned so much. Every technological report has been poured over by experts at 19 to see how we could put it into practice. Yeah, but that's just the foundation. Robert, not this again. We don't go around replicating 500 to cure cancer just because we can. We have a responsibility to maintain normalcy. We can't become the arbiters of what secrets the world can and can't know. We can only hide all of them equally. What if it has run its course? What do you plan to do? We've already got people in India and China sites looking around for the location of the other two cities. We've learned all we can from Amani Ram. So it's time to move on to new pastures. What happened to us? Reassigned with glowing recommendations to any projects of their choosing. What if they want to stay here? A lot of them have become attached to this place. We've turned it from our ruins into a home. They don't want to leave. They enter the throne room. Well, you can't presume to speak for everyone, can you? I'm their leader. They look up to me. Well, in any case, it's unfortunate, but they don't exactly have much say in the matter. It's how it is. You're being too hasty, Overseer. Maybe, but the rest of the council agrees with me. We'll leave a skeleton crew to continue low priority work. But we need you and Nussbaum's talents elsewhere. No. What? I'm not going. Amani Ram was lost once because of people who didn't understand what had to offer. I'm not going to let that happen again. I don't think you understand. It's not up to you anymore. The decision has been made. I'm not some fucking dog you can shove around from project to project. Have you forgotten who you're talking to? I could have you terminated, Robert. Maybe out there. Not here. Where's here? My city, surrounded by my people. All bodyguards, razor, assault rifles at Aram. Just what the fuck are you implying? Do you seriously think you can just disobey the council? No, but I can change their, their minds. Aram turns and takes a seat on the Fulad throne. Hear me. Lower your weapons. All members of Alpha 1 gingerly lower their guns. Amani Ram has far too much to offer or to throw it away. Use and spent. Go to the council. Tell them the project will continue. There's work to be done yet. I have an inch thick telcure plate in my cranium, you freaking idiot. Kill him. Members of Alpha 1 begin to raise their guns. Gunshots ring out, all fall to the floor, shot point blank in the back of their skulls. Behind them, a number of TRT India 3 Cherno personnel uncloak their personal shields. Aram sits on the throne, surrounded by spent shells deflected by his own shield, and set into the throne. Good effort. 
You're insane! You can't kill me! That was outside your own death, wa death warrant! I'm not going to kill you. I'm not a monster. Hedvig. From above, Nesbon um, descends on her metal wings. She is dressed in the bronze and its intricate war armor seen in the throne's visions. She glides to a soft landing in front of 511. In her right hand is a curved golden sword. Yes? Take him. Toss him from the walls. Let him run back to the council. You're fucking insane! When I'm helping you, I'm a genius. When I'm not, I'm insane. You can't take on the Foundation and and win, Aram. No one can! You seriously think I have any interest in destroying the Foundation? I'm not some supervillain. <coughs> I'm an engineer, and I see a problem on the horizon. One you can't even conceptualize. And I need to act before or you get us all killed. Now. Air rises from the throne, raising the fist at, at Nussbaum. Get out of my city. Nussbaum steps behind O511, grabs him by a waist and takes off, shooting into the air on her, her wings. And log. O511 was as positive. What well, is the pot? I stood outside SCP-001, 0.6 kilometers from um, his air escort, and quickly evacuated to nearby site 30, to nearby site 34. An Overwatch command emergency session was called to address the events in Monty Rom and vote on whether to the scrambled task force in the region and use military force to regain control over SCP-001. Council vote summary. Yay, abstain, and nay. Oh, five, I've won this. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, eleven, and thirteen said yay. Oh, five, seven said nay. Oh, five, eight, ten, and twelve said decided to abstain from this vote. Additional vote administrator. Status approved. Temporary Task Force Alpha 6 was scrambled. Or at Site 39 over the following nine hours, consisting of Mobile Task Force Epsilon 11, Nine Tailed Fox, New 7, Hammer Down, and Z9, Mole Rats. An advanced invasion plan was drawn and executed on at 3 on 30 E67 local time. That is not how time works. Alpha 6 communications to Site 39 command marked. And normally, Alpha 6 X ray O character chatter italicized. Intercepted external radio chatter or bolded. <clears throat> Convoy in transit over South Arabian Desert. Five Tiltator aircraft and personnel, three sky cranes with cargo and arms. Air Convoy A3 clicks from SCP-001, coming in for a landing. Convoy lands 3 kilometers from the entrance to SCP-001. We have touchdown. Repeat. We have... Repeat. Touchdown. Unloading packages. First on disembark, I can begin unloading cargo. After fully unloading, there are 83 personnel across 3 MTFs, equipped with small and heavy arms and, and an armored personnel carriers. Jesus, we brought out an army. Yeah, call us a freaking and cavalry. Beginning approach to SCP-001. No movement sighted. The convoy slowly be begins slowly advancing towards SCP-001. 41 minutes later, they arrive. The minimal base camp set up outside the entrance is, is abandoned. A set of tents half buried in the dunes. A golden, cord a golden curved sword is impaled in the sand. That's a message if I ever seen one. A bad and all hope, yada yada. This guy's not very subtle, is he? Be advised, preparing to radio screeches sleeping through several frequencies. Aram's voice becomes audible through the grain. Please, Sag, back. I don't want to have Sag. We're on the same 
adjusting frequency off con clear over so it'll clear for incursion you are a go over god boy turns and advances forward right into the entrance of scp-001 several seconds pass until the entrance opens the force is passed through the threshold into scp-001 eyes on amani ram holy shit that is goddamn beautiful Amani Ram lies ahead of the convoy. Its walls have been considerably repaired, and the eastern gate that faces the entrance of SCP-001 has been blockaded and reinforced, though it is largely obscured by a sand dune. Figures stand along the massive walls and battlements. Several fly overhead, dipping and swerving through the air. Be advised. Yeah, targets it's spotted. <clears throat> Negative. For arrests to engage, negative. Wait for them to... Oh dear, it's been all over an hour. Radio swap uh, ups frequencies. The sag is considerably less and, and Aram's voice is much clearer. Hear me! All members of Alpha 6 are momentarily dazed. The figures continue to fly overhead in circles, listening to Darius' movement on the battlements. You don't understand. I made a mistake, okay? That static. That wasn't supposed to happen with at eleven. I've learned static sense. <clears throat> Fuck, that must be the it has uh, I think that's short for kind of it'll hazard. Alpha six, swapping frequency, activating in, in Bruckman engine. Keep moving. Convoy advances toward the blockade. The figures on the battlements come into focus. They are a number of individuals dressed in the war armor seen in the reported visions of arms with a mixture of swords, pole arms, and long range rifle like weapons, all of which are leveled at the advancing force. They have high ground and unknown arm armament, armament. Unfavorable conditions for a firefight command. Acknowledge. For a sec. As soon as 11. Sec. Another cylinder inside the statue's hands. Tomorrow's last testament. I. We cannot have this fight. I'm begging. Static. Command. Keep moving. The abominate. You don't understand. I didn't understand. It's not a person. It's not. Static. A force of nature. Like a hurricane. Aram, this is your one and only chance to tell your forces, all your forces, to stand down. We will retake the city and confiscate the Paris technology. You cannot hide a hurricane. You will need static. Me. We will place you and Hedvig and into custody. Then you can plead your case to the council as you'd like. They stack to listen. Beer cats never listen to visionaries. Godboy stops 100 meters from the sand and the on 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 blocks that blocks the path. Last chance. If you don't want to have this fight. Tell everyone. To put down their guns. I'm afraid I can't do that. Two dozen frigates grab as the sand dunes from the other side. They are are three to four meters tall and hulking in golden exit suits that played armor with pneumatic limbs. Helmets obscure their faces. The central two figures are the largest. One is four meters tall and intricately designed and powered in silver and gold armor. Aaron pilots a suit. The other appears to be made of stone, a walking statue of a shirtless bearded man holding a sword and, and spear. Oh fuck, Max! You might be unwilling to listen to reason, but you will not stop me from changing the world, saving it. From above, a figure descends, hovering in the air above Aram and extending her wings outward. When this is over, you will beg for my help. This only your cannon fires. The sand explodes a few meters from the Alpha Six line. More cannons fire. Alpha Six forces duck behind cover and begin returning fire as the warsuits charge down the hill. Gunfire continues for several minutes. The engagement is too far from the walls for the troops on about all men to fire. But the war suits use a mix of brute strength and oversized range weaponry to break the Alpha 6 line. Automatic cannons from the 8 ECs begin firing and have considerable effects, bringing a number of the war suits crashing to the ground. The reactor cores from fallen units eject, causing major explosions. 
Shouting and yelling from both sides is, is audible. Fucking hell. Spread out. Don't give them easy targets. Hit. Do not fail your king. Gradually, the superior men over ability of the Alpha 6 forces begin to turn the tide. While smaller and individually less powerful, the base of tactics, scrap formation, and multiple angles of attack wear down the war suits. Right. Several soldiers lay wounded or dead, but a number of Vekadite war suits are erect or disabled. Keep firing! Evasive formations! Keep them off the tracks! I see move open overhead. Use the flag. Overhead, a number of flying Vekadites dive bomb, um, causing a squad to scatter. One grabs the soul. Grabs a soldier by the torso and pulls him into the air, screaming. Moments later, an anti aircraft and nice one begins firing, sending a number of the flying units crashing to the ground. Thus, bomb is considerably faster and more evasive than the others, and gracefully it dodges flak while returning fire. Pull back! Hedvig, go and sure preserver is ready! Thus, bomb rockets away from the firefight at extremely high speeds, shooting towards the Monty Ramen's sail. Everyone lifts a portion of, the, of a destroyed war to heaves it in an anti aircraft emplacement, crushing it and its operator. The remaining war suits, roughly a dozen, begin to pull back over the dune as Alpha 6 forces advance, firing on the retreating mechanites. Heck you, assholes! Conserve your ammo. Do you guys feel that? The ground shakes. Ofcom, we're getting tremors. Stand by. Hear me, Colossus. Hear your king and defend your city. The ground shakes. A massive hand reaches out of the dunes, spilling vast tons of sand to the ground. Another similarly giant hand reaches out in the other direction, fingers wrapping around the massive wall of Armani Ra. A Colossus, humanoid metal golem, easily 100 meters tall and armored in all locations, pepper toward auditories, drags itself out of the dunes, turning its gigantic head towards Alpha 6 X forces. Fuck, 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 pull it back! What the fuck is that thing? Command, we do not have the armament, armament to take that thing on. Ofcom, please advise. Begin a tactical retreat. Have your armament and air support weapons. As was grabbed, it's waiting for you outside at the entrance to. <clears throat> the Colossus takes a, giant, a single step after dragging itself from the sand dunes. Several Alpha, uh, Alpha 6 operators and mechanites are crushed under its titanic. After its titanic foot, the ground shakes and several buildings and an ammonic ground visibly shudder at the footfalls of the Colossus, which is larger than many of them. Aaron does not move, raising his sword to the sky. Yes, this is how it should be. Head fake? The Nusfam appears in the air, descending and perching on Aram's massive shoulder. Nusfam, we are ready at your command. Excellent. Finally. Okay, I'm starting to read this wrong. The Colossus takes another step up towards the rapidly retreating force of Foundation personnel, who fire rockets at it and machine gun rounds. They detonate on impact and the scorched armor, but otherwise have no effect. You didn't accept my help. You used and threw away this city. I saw something beautiful in it, and we fixed it and brought it back to life. All of it. Robert, please. A number of operatives reach the exit and throw themselves through, landing on the other side. The majority of the forces remain inside SCP-001, moving towards the entrance, pursued by the Colossus. No. I'll protect the world from the abominant on my own terms. The Foundation is a relic. If the human race is to survive, what is to come? They will need to adapt, to change, to improve. My name is Robert Bumaro, and the world will change for the Church of the Broken God, because it has no choice. All communications cease. Following this is massive of sur power surge, right the electronics of awaiting aircraft 3 kilometers away. All communication in and out of SCP-001 ceased, and subsequent investigation has indicated the entrance to SCP-001 no longer exists in the South Arabian Desert. It is still resident in Mechanite, and forces repaired and safely activated McCain's curse, teleporting Amani Ram to an unknown location. The failure of the Amani Ram initiative, the betrayal of doctors as Aram and Nussbaum, and the loss of SCP-001 with its countless amounts of 
foundation knowledge, equipment, personnel, and paratechnology have elevated global threat level to Kinect 4, considerable potential to disrupt the general population. Foundation policy regarding digital and paratechnology technological implants and equipment has been frozen, pending further review by Overwatch Command. A charge of the broken god has been designated at Group of Interest 004. All efforts are to be made to locate Robert Ar 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 or Bomaro and Hedwig Nussbaum and bring them into Foundation in custody. L laboratory e e samples of Davite, Nalkin, and mechanized biological weapons used in the Siege of Armani Realm have produced viable specimens. They have been and provided provisional SCP explanations, SCP-697, SCP-610, and SCP-217, respectively. Project Foregrounder Triad has been an organized to address the consequences of the Imani Ram initiative and report directly to Overwatch Command. As to training the locations of the Nalka City of Black Aditam, the David Covenant cities of Montreal and Kara, and the identity and nature of the entity known as Uvabnet, have all been innovated to global or priority level alpha. And with this entirely too long video, that is the end of Amani Realm and SCP-001. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I finally don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!